in one of my recent videos about how to select the perfect topwater lure, I asked a question at the end of the video if you guys would be interested in a five-part educational series, and I got an overwhelming response from you all that you would be interested. So I'm going to apologize in advance that there won't be any big fish caught or any big blow-ups in this video, but I can assure you that if you stay to the end of this video, you'll learn some information about the weather that you didn't know, and it'll make you a better fisherman. So we're going to jump right into it. And I think that the weather is the most important and also the most overlooked factor in bass fishing. When I was a kid growing up, I would just go fishing any chance I got. I never looked at the weather. I'd have some good days and I'd have some bad days. And over years and years of fishing and documenting fishing trips, learning more about the weather, I started to pick up on things that would help me plan my fishing trips better to put me in a better opportunity to catch more fish. So there's certain things like, you know, water temperature, air pressure, things that are affected by the weather that cause the fish to bite more. And once you understand all of these factors and how it affects the fish in your lakes, then you'll understand how to prepare for a fishing trip. For instance, I know that if it's a bright sunny day, that the fish in my lakes are going to be down deep around wood and I'll fish with worms and jigs. And if it is going to be an overcast, cloudy day, I'll know that I can tie on more topwater lures and also swim baits because the fish are going to be kind of roaming around. And if it's really windy day, I'll know to use uh, crankbaits and spinnerbaits. So there's several factors in weather that you can read that help you prepare for that day's trip. So let's talk about, in my opinion, the most important factor, which is air pressure. And air pressure is just like if you've ever heard about people talk about a tidal water system, you know, that, that rises and drops throughout a day. And the old saying is, you know, you need to fish on a falling tide. Well, that's the same way with air pressure. You want to fish when the pressure is falling, and that's usually right before a front comes through, and that's when the fish will be feeding the most. Now, if you have a steady pressure, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, a going to be bad fishing but your worst fishing conditions are high pressure situations and usually that comes right after a cold front that pressure will shoot up there and it makes fishing really tough and that's one of those invisible factors that humans don't really you know get to experience because we don't we don't feel the air pressure but it it is very impactful on a fish and its feeding habits so if you're checking the weather, make sure you find a source that also shows air pressure. And speaking of sources, I'm going to list a few of my favorite weather websites in the description of this video, but I'm going to say up front that I suggest that you find out which one's best for your area because I've found that certain websites are much better at predicting the weather in my area than others. So I suggest you experiment and find out which one is the best for you. So I check the weather almost every day of the year and sometimes multiple times a day. And this is the style format that I like to, to view the weather in. This is just a typical 10-day weather forecast. And if you'll see, the red line represents the temperature. The black line here represents the pressure. The blue is the chance of rain. And then the dark blue on the bottom is going to be the wind speed. And I like to look at the weather in a graphical representation like this because it kind of overlays and you can see the full picture, you know, all in one glance. So later in this video, I'm going to go through what factors are the most important during seasonal parts of the year like spring, summer, fall, and winter. But right now, I want to show you some key things about, you know, how to dissect these graphs. So I think everybody understands the temperature portion of this pretty well. You know, that's something that you talk about throughout the day, the high and the low. But I want to show you this pressure that I've been talking about, and that's going to be this black line. And the way you measure pressure is in inches. And if you see over on the right, you have, you know, a, anywhere from 29 to 30 inches. And I'd say that somewhere right around 30 or 31 is our typical pressure range. And this is particularly a low week or a low 10-day stretch 
in pressure for us, and that's because we've got a lot of rain this week. There's actually flooding going on in the south right now. But I'll show you in particular this this very steep drop off, and that's right before all of this rain came through. And you'll see that that if you were fishing during that time, I can almost guarantee you, you had low wind and you had you know very extreme rate of fall and the pressure and also a high temperature with overcast conditions. In my opinion, that is the best con overall conditions for fishing. And I guarantee you, if you would have been fishing at that time, you could have caught fish on multiple patterns. So then we'll also look at, you basically have a daily rise and fall of pressure, and then throughout you know the week, you'll see the, the entire overall pressure is rising. So we had a, a lot of rain come through, and we had a low pressure system so this week would have been good you know to fish all week long rain low pressure overcast conditions as long as it wasn't lightning i would recommend any day this week all right the next weather factor i'd like to discuss is wind speed and wind direction so these two are important for planning bait selection all right so we're going to look at this uh, graphical of a, it's a three hour time interval for the wind we have at eight o'clock we have wind blowing seven miles an hour out of the south and what this will do is help me plan out my fishing trip so I know that starting at daylight at 6 a.m. I'm gonna have some low wind you know around four mile an hour wind and it's gonna gradually start picking up until around 10 or 11 a.m. it's going to be around 10 miles an hour so what this tells me is that I'll be able to fish some top water early in the morning we got a chance of a thunderstorm coming through around 11 o'clock so my day may get cut short and then we may also have a decent afternoon bite we're gonna get some cloudy weather the winds gonna to start to taper back off so probably what I would do is fish top water for the first couple hours and then as the wind picked up swap over to spinnerbait and try to get that bite right before that storm rolls in. But one key that I want to talk about here is that the direction of the wind. So what I suggest that every one of you do is get an overhead view of the local lakes or ponds or rivers that you all fish. Also understanding the directional, you know, which portion of the lake is north, south, east, and west. Because the wind direction will also tell you which part of the lake you should be fishing so for instance if i'm going fishing at this particular lake and the weather is blowing out of the west that will set up perfect for this and the fact that i have this little slack line right here on this bank and i know that i can still fish top water all my all my bait selections would still work on this because of this tree line here on the west portion of this small pond now, if the wind picked up to, you know, 10 to 12 miles an hour, it would be tough fishing the east portion of this small pond just because it's out in the open. So you need to kind of see what kind of cover you have around the, the lakes and the ponds that you fish. And it will also tell you that wind direction will tell you, you know, what types of baits that you can fish, you know. So what I would possibly do in a small pond like this is start off topwater fishing on that west bank and then maybe, you know, go over to the windier portion afterwards and throw a spinner bait looking for the, you know, the wind blown bank and looking to see if some bait fish had piled up there. And this is just a small scale, you know, you can open it up into, you know, as big a lake or river system as you want to, but understanding the direction that the wind will be blowing and how strong will help you determine which baits that you can throw and and allow you to be set up and prepared before you even get to the lake. And one last tip on wind direction, if you ever hear a phrase like 8 mile Per hour southeast wind that means the wind is coming out of the southeast going to the northwest so it's always the direction that it's coming from so let's talk about some bait selections for low wind versus high wind and I like to draw that line somewhere in the seven to eight mile per hour wind speed category so anything below that is low wind bait selection and anything above that is going to be your high wind bait selection so some low wind baits would be worms, jigs, 
most of your top water baits and you can also think of it as your slower moving baits the baits that you have to throw out let them sink to the bottom and then slowly work them back in those are going to be the baits that excel in the low winds now there are specific baits that work really well in high wind like deep diving crank baits chatter baits spinner baits the the top waters like the pompadours the noisy style baits that help to you know rattle traps things like that the things that'll help draw that fish's attention when they can't hear as well as they would in the low wind situation so you can also base your lure selection based off of the wind speed all right and the next factor i'd like to discuss is precipitation or rain and you've seen in a lot of our videos us geared up in rain suits out there fishing and honestly it's because that's when a lot of the best fishing occurs and uh, Liz and I both have invested in a good rain suit and when it's raining as long as it's not lightning we'll get right out there in the middle of it because that is when you see your low pressure situations occur you know light rain is, is usually the best scenario but we'll get out there and fish in those conditions because you are often rewarded so don't shy away from fishing in the rain but also don't go out in the middle of a lightning storm so use good judgment on the lightning factor of it but one of my favorite things to do is go out and throw a buzz bait while it's raining that's just one of the things i've done a lot and i love fishing that buzz bait in the rain all right and as we all know the weather changes sometimes drastically throughout the seasons of a year so i want to break down you know the spring summer fall and winter and tips on what you should be looking for during these times so let's start out with the spring uh, this is the time of year that around most of the country the fish start spawning and what you need to look for is a warming trend and a lot of times i look for three or four days of bright sunshine you know not overcast days because that'll warm that water up and that'll get the fish in the active spawning mode and they'll pull up shallow and that creates better fishing conditions so bright sunny days are okay in the spring as long as it doesn't follow a cold front so if that pressure is low and you've got sunshine that's usually a good time to fish in the spring you also have to deal with some severe winds in the spring just because of the changing weather conditions so a lot of times you just need to take that opportunity when the winds below say 12 miles per hour you got some sunshine and low pressure and get out there on the water and search for those shallow fish all right now as far as summer weather patterns are concerned um, you're not going to have those cold fronts move through so you don't have to worry about those high pressure systems so in a lot of areas the summertime is the best time best season overall for fishing uh, you don't you know most of the fish will be moving deep so if you have you know bright sunshiny days the fish are going to be around some type of wood cover usually you know a dock um, a log a tree something that will block that sun from their eyes a lot of times they'll be out deep but if you ha so one thing i like to look for is overcast days because that gives them the ability to start swimming around feeding you know you, that top water bite will come back active and then you also have a lot of rainstorms in the summertime so i i look for rain and overcast conditions in the summer and now as far as the fall is concerned the one key weather pattern i like to look for is when the nighttime temperature starts to drop off now what that's going to do is trigger the fish to move out of the depths into the shallow end they'll start moving up in the creeks and in the backs of coves and they'll start following bait fish around and this will be the last highly active feeding season for fish because they usually feed pretty heavily and fatten up in the fall and then not near as much in the winter time because their metabolism slows back down so look for those cooling nights once that nighttime temperature starts to fall off move from the deep water to the shallow water up in the coves and the backs of pockets all right and now for some winter weather fishing tips uh, you're going to start seeing more and more cold fronts come through and you always want to fish pre-front instead of post-front so if you pay attention to that tip i gave you about the air pressure as that pressure starts dropping and that cold front's you know moving in that's when you want to fish i found a school of deep water fish before and i caught 40 to 50 right on the the front side of a cold front and came back two days later the school of fish was still there i could see it on the uh, sonar detector and i couldn't get a bite so the fish just 
completely shut off because of that high pressure. So pay cl very close attention to your pressure in the cold months and you want to you want to fish those uh, pre-front conditions. And I've also heard that fishing in the snow was really good, but here in South Alabama we don't get to fish in the snow very often. All right, and one last tip I want to give you guys is I get asked so often, you know, what do you think about the moon phase and how does it affect fishing? Well, I think that the weather is a hundred times more important than the moon phase. The only time that I really pay attention to the moon phase is the full moon in March, April, and May. The March full moon will start the largemouth bass spawning cycle. The April full moon will start the bluegill spawning cycle. And the May full moon will start the shad spawning cycle just here in the southeast. Now, if you can combine a good moon cycle with good weather conditions then it might be a perfect scenario but one thing i'll caution you about is a lot of people think that fishing full moons you know is a good thing to do well if you think about it when the moon is full that just allows the fish to feed even more at night they can see their the shad and the bluegills that they're eating even better because of the the brighter light and they feed more at night and therefore they don't have to feed as much in the daytime so don't get your hopes up just because you got a good full moon condition and think that the fish are going to bite good i found more success fishing the new moon and just because it, it it does have an effect on them but also pay more attention to the weather if you're fishing post front conditions on a new moon you're probably still not going to catch many fish so the weather is in my opinion the biggest factor so if you learned something during this video please share it with a friend and help them learn about how the weather affects fishing and also leave a comment below and let me know which video you'd like to see next in this educational series now i've done enough talking i think it's time for me and liz to go do some fishing and i hope this helps out in your fishing knowledge and will help you catch more fish on the water. Good luck, guys.